Hello, everybody. Hi, Sue. We will begin in just a little while. And Beth. Yeah, Beth, you and I both hope that Facebook be decides to behave itself, but Sue says we're doing good, so. <laughs> and my husband has both of his fingers crossed. Good evening, Carol. Thanks for joining us. We'll start up in just a little bit. See you downstairs when you're done. I love you. Love you too. Can everybody hear me roll around on my my new little stool for sewing? Mays Landing, New Jersey. That sounds like fun, Barb. Barbara, which which, which do you prefer? And Illinois. Hey, Melody. I lived in Illinois for a couple of years. just across the border from Louisville, Kentucky. And Washington. I love getting so many diverse, fun individuals in the same place. Because then we come up with the best ideas and we find the best solutions. That's part of the reason I love doing so longs. That and then I get to play with really fun patterns. Central, gotcha. Central Illinois sounds like a fun place. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if this is the right one. That's my ironing board. That's the junk on my ironing board. That's me up my sewing machine. There we go. Now you can see my beautiful prop table. See how fast I moved away from that uh, sewing machine. All right, before we get deeply involved in this whole conversation, welcome Kimberly. Before we get deeply involved in this whole beautiful pattern, by the way, I already did a, a test. We're not going to look at my stitching because it was a test. So, so these are things that we're going to work on, but. Before we get too far into this, just went from delayed video to ended video. Well, that's fun. Teresa, can you still hear us? Teresa, you're going to have to tell us if it came back up. And I'm having a little technical difficulty, but that's my own dang fault.
Okay. My poor husband. He's my IT department, and he's just... And I just got back from a convention that we were at, and I had been sewing all week long. But I wasn't actually, like, completely sewing. I was more, like, cutting out a ton of these because I did this pattern once, and after that I fell in love with the dang thing. Thank you very much, too. And so I have two dozen of these cut, 12 of the regular size, and 12 of the minis. So <laughs> I was cutting all of that out. Uh, so that's what I've been doing. Well, I'm glad it's behaving itself, and I guess we're going to have to invite Teresa to take a look at the, uh, the video on demand part. I don't even know where my mouse is right now. Oh, there's my mouse. My husband is fixing my controller issue. Or trying to fix my controller issue. Okay, so let's start talking about this pattern. Because Sue made an amazing fun pattern and this thing is adorable and I love it. Uh, so this is my test version. I happen to have a, a, a scrap of batik that was just the right size, so woo! Um, I used every single thing per the book of w the supplies that were called for in the pattern. So I've got craft decks on here. I've got, so the non-porous foam that I found was just a little <coughs> bit thinner. It's fine. I'll deal with it later, honey. So, well, you can tell the computer that it does not need to reboot, reboot and we are not talking to the computer. It's just been a fun day. So if you take a look at the uh, pictures of the patterns in at the very front of the pattern, these have got a good amount of definition between where the sewing is and where the f just the regular fabric is. Like there's a solid bump up, like you can tell, whereas mine just has a bit more depth. Like there's a little depth there, but there's not a ton. So that's what that foam is for, to give it a good, more polished look. Um, and I absolutely adore it. I had a few problems with the pattern. I figured out what I did wrong because I went back and fixed it. That's why we're not looking at my stitching. Not looking at my stitching. So, I mean, the definition of the classic zip around wallet is pretty un hard to misunderstand. Zipper starts on one side, goes to the other. Literally zips around. We've got two pocket sides, space for one, two, three credit cards on each side. And then, so it's six here, it's six here. Pocket space in here. This guy is detached at the bottom and obviously change or whatever else you wanna go in here is in here. Now I did, I cut out my pattern pieces a little wonky and I did it on purpose because I wanted, I wasn't sure what went where because I have this really bad habit of not reading a pattern all the way through until it's too late. <laughs> so, as you can see, these are those little triangle pieces and I thought that one would go here and one would go on the underside. No, it gets folded over. <laughs> so I have one over here and one over here because that's gonna have green and green and then blue and blue there and blue there and it was all gonna be cute and pretty. Or Actually, I was going to do blue and blue, and then green would be the inside of everything. Yeah, that didn't work, but that's okay. So, that's all right. I mean, learning experience, now I know. Um, the main problem that I did find I had was making sure that this interior piece was lined up properly with the exterior, and making sure it was lined up on all four sides at the same time. I found a couple of little tips and tricks to work around that. Additionally, when we're working with, I'm going to bend everything out of proportion, but that's okay. It's my test one. It's not going anywhere. When we're working with this side spot, it can get really bulky. 
and I found a couple of ways to work around that and I also found a few things that made my life easier when doing that so we will go over all of that when we get to those steps in the pattern and trust me there are mistakes in this guy uh, for those of you who do not have access to this big monster amount of zipper tape I got this from the same woman that I bought my industrial machine from her um, her partner had passed away recently and she had done upholstery so I got the industrial machine and this baby with zipper pulls for a steal I got this whole thing for 20 bucks I was really lucky but she just wanted it gone so um, for those of you who don't have that this zipper is an exterior zipper uh, I literally bought it at Joann Fabrics um, I believe Sue calls for a 22 inch in this thing so I made sure I got like a 24 26 just to make sure I had plenty of zipper space um, so I would suggest you do that uh, but that uh, was easy enough to find at Joann's or you can get that at any hobby store so don't feel like you have to run out and buy zipper tape it's not that big a deal now I will tell you that part of the reason that I have a few concerns about so somebody asked me in the comments uh, can we use coil tape that's what this is uh, this is actually one of the coil tapes that I won at uh, the retreat for Barb's bags but um, one of the one of somebody asked if we could use a coil tape and in the comments I had said I don't suggest it um, and here's why and I still don't suggest it though I might try it because I know a friend of mine Christine she did coil tape with hers and she hasn't had any problems that I've heard of so far but you know and now I've lost my mouse there she is but you know everybody has things differently Ah, uh, Kimberly, well, I'm glad you're back. And I promise this will be uploaded into the video section shortly after we stop. And it'll get, to, uh, the video will be uploaded to my YouTube channel, which I finally uploaded all of the Journey Travel Bag stuff. So that's up there. But for those of you who don't have that, uh, and my video just freaked out on me too. I know we're about to storm over here, but I didn't, didn't think it would be that big a deal. Uh, part of the reason I worry about the coil tape, let me talk about that for a moment, is that I worry about their having, you know those people who they buy that awesome bag from you and you spent hours and hours and hours on it and they stuff the high heaven out of it and now the bottom starts, you know, pulling away from things or it starts breaking. I worry that if you're making this to a sell to a friend, or sell to as a business that they're going to put a lot of stuff in here and <clears throat> instead of having a nice flat streamlined thing they're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff in there like let's just use a couple of my pens for an example that's definitely not gonna fit but let's say well now now it's a lot harder and you can maybe you can see this is a lot fatter this actually bows out right there so I am <coughs> excuse me so I'm worried that if we use a coil zipper the coils will start pulling apart <coughs> that is the nature of a coil zipper so in case you you're not familiar Coil zippers are literally one continuous looping coil and it just literally is laid upon itself. So like, so the coil would start here and there, it would literally loop over and over and over itself to make those places where the two coils can interconnect. So, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to drink in a second here, but I really want to make my point. So I strongly recommend the metal teeth, which is what I was trying to get at. Um, that's better. 
So the coiled zipper, I'm a little worried about, but I'm not worried at all if you decide to get the metal zipper. Now, you can probably get by just fine if you get the molded plastic tape, which looks just like the metal zipper tapes do, um, the metal zipper teeth, except instead of having metal zippers there, they are uh, molded plastic. Blazing Florida. Janet's hot here, but I think you take the cake over there. I'm not looking forward to it being any warmer tomorrow. So, to get actually down to what we actually all came here for, I promise I won't take 20, 12 hours reorganizing my pen cup jar. <coughs> all right. Everybody ready? Okay. In case you haven't noticed, I love this pattern. So, I have bad news. I cut some of this out already. Don't get mad at me. But I was way too excited. Way too excited. And as I, so I cut this out the same time I cut this one out, because I already saw from the pattern, the way the pattern was set up, and everything, how much I was going to enjoy it. And uh, I really enjoy this pattern. And even after I made it once. See, I've, I've had trouble finding a pattern that I'm willing to make more than once. This one is not that problem. It goes together after you figure it out fairly quickly, fairly easily. It's all a matter of getting it figured out is the fun part. So, there's a couple of pattern pieces, some of which you only need to cut out a square, some of which you need to cut out a shape, some of which you need to cut out as fabric, some of it as other pieces. So the first piece I wanted to cut out, because that's the important one, is the exterior piece. So for those of you, this, this piece right here that's on the outside is this guy right here. I believe that's A. Now if I can remember, oh right, guess where I put my pattern pieces. Why? Oh, they're right here. So for those of you who haven't seen the Journey Travel Bag uh, video <coughs> that we did, <coughs> you can clearly tell I don't talk for a living. And I'm not even like 20 minutes into the stream. <coughs> for those of you who haven't seen that, I tend to copy my patterns onto clear plastic just so I can see what's going on behind the clear plastic. Okay, so pattern piece A. So that's this guy. We need a few more things out of the way. And there we go. Okay. So this is pattern piece A. This is going to be my zipper for my little pocket on the inside. I just have that attached because I don't want to lose it. <coughs> now, pattern piece A looks fairly symmetrical. It's a little longer on one side than the other, but only by a little bit. And the long side is the one that's going to be this way. So this is literally going to be folded up and one part up here is going to be there. I did this intentionally on this piece of fabric because I really liked how this design is. And see how I left a little space over there and a little space over there. I actually got it a little off center, but only by a tiny bit, so I'm not too worried about it. I think there was something that was that was the very edge of the fabric over here, so I couldn't get any further over there. But um so when this is said and done, it's gonna be looking kind of sort of like that. And that was very, very, very much on purpose. And that's why I cut mine out of fairly transparent clear plastic. Um, this actually delineates where the false stitch line starts and stops. Um, it also tells you centers of tops and bottoms. And then this actually has the uh, zipper location as well. Just kind of stenciled onto it uh, in metric marker. Um, Sharpie to be exact. Uh, so that's A. I don't think I cut out B, C, and D, and I think I did that on purpose because I wanted to talk about 
craft decks and the foam and how much I love craft decks because that stuff is awesome. Um, there's a spot where it just says cut out, you know, a square of 10 by 10 and a half of fabric. This is actually the interior lining piece when we get that far. It's called the back panel. That is going to go back here. That's going to wrap around your, cra your uh, second piece of craft decks. That would be C. So this back panel will end up being the interior lining. So you're not going to really see a ton of it. So try not to use a really big pattern. That's why I got the little dots right there. So you'll see it at the very bottom and you'll see it at the very back. So it's not going to be a really obvious piece. And thank you, Beth. I like this fabric too. Not my favorite in the world. I actually like this better, but this one's really nice. I like how it, it works. <coughs> uh, I'm going to skip the craft X pieces so we can talk about that more in depth in a few minutes. I'm going to skip over to E. So this is the one that had me flabbergasted for a little while. So here's E. We're going to cut out four lining pieces. Now that's actually going to be one, two, three, four. This guy over here. So don't think that it's one, two, three, four, like I did. That was, uh, I thought we might cut it in half or do a hokey pokey, turn it around, something like that. Nope, nope, nope. Because I did one in blue and one in green, thinking, it, thinking that this would be, you know, from here to here would be one and from here to here would be two. That's not how that works. It's one, two, three, four, and it gets folded over onto itself later. Uh, yes, Sheila, I love the clear. Uh, these are actually, for those of you wondering, these are actually folders from the dollar store um, because actually I have some that I've just unfolded and I can get pretty much all the pattern pieces. <coughs> like, that's one whole folder. This one happened to have cactuses on it. I don't care what it has on it, but this bottom piece was used to be folded up like that to be a folder. <clears throat> makes life a lot easier when cutting out patterns and you know I go to lunch with the husband and his friend and they talk tech all day long and it gets really boring so I'll just put in my headphones listen to an audiobook still be mildly social so anyway accordion piece so I cut my accordion pieces out of the same colored piece of this because I learned my, my mistake and that's gonna give it in this case something that I want as a whole whole piece that and I wanted the credit card pieces, the card slot piece, and the zipper to really pop out and stand out. But that was from a design point of view. In case you haven't noticed, I tend to rattle. And I'll, I will literally just keep talking. Which makes me kind of good at this. I actually cut out the, the zipper placement as a piece of plastic too. Because, you know, might as well. So the little piece should be all the same color. Um, I, Beth, in my opinion, yes. All the little pieces should be the same color. Because, so keep in mind, it's going to be pretty obvious whenever somebody unzips their wallet, you're going to see it. But if you make your, your little pieces different colors, then it's going to look like this. Which, if you're going for more of, not to be rude, but if you're going for more of a circus kind of look, <laughs> totally works. If you're going for a multi, really bright, fun colored piece thing, then this is totally it. Do two different colors, do six different colors. I'm not sure how you'd get six, but I'd be really impressed. But from a continuity standpoint, in my opinion, design wise, I would not make them two different colors again because it just looks funny. Unless you're talking with a client who has a really hard time, uh, a really hard time, like, she wants this stuff on the blue side and this stuff on the green side and then she knows that these credit cards over here she's not supposed to touch and the the ones over here she can you know and it's it's a personal preference and it's literally a design choice and i try really hard not to tell people how to design their bag color wise i just tell you what i like because there are bags out there that i don't like the look of at all but that's okay i don't have to and you don't have to like the look of mine either. I'm very, very flattered that some of you do, but it's okay. 
that's that's why we sell our bags because everybody likes something different and that's in my opinion one of the joys of this world but anyway so no I would not let the little pieces pattern pattern piece E be more than one color but that's just again my design standpoint so pattern piece F is the deck of the light oh by the way I know some of you were here for the uh, heaven help me some of you were here for when I was doing the journey travel bag and I could not for the life of me figure out how to say Decoville and when I went to the convention we had a whole conversation about it yeah I think we had like three or four conversations about it Carol yes this will be the video will be in the files it'll be under videos in Barb's bags Facebook group when it's over it probably takes about half an hour or so and like I said before it'll get uploaded eventually to my uh, YouTube channel altered notions <clears throat> which is what the little a icon let right about there is that's my company logo in case you were curious mm. a couple other pieces of feedback thank you by the way is now we will if I can get my fingers in the right direction now we will always have a starting on page one and the date which would be this way and then of course I can't do this backwards we, we always give credit to the amazing pattern designers thank you so much Sue we love you see this I, this I can do we love you See if I can get a good heart there close and then we shortened the link for the um, further her pattern so if you haven't picked up her pattern it's right there there's a really quick little shortened link there to make our lives easier so anyway uh, Decoville so the reason you cut two Decoville but four lining pieces is you end up cutting these guys in half so don't worry about it you'll end up cutting this in half and you'll end up interfacing one side so you cut this in half and you'll interface one half this way and one half on this way it'll be beautiful it's a very good economic use of space and fewer pattern pieces to cut out so thank you Sue for that that was awesome um, we've gone through all of the pattern pieces except for those of the foam and craft X I'm gonna go through the miscellaneous 12 million other little pieces really quick if you didn't catch it I have already cut out besides this one uh, 12 of the regular sizes and 12 of the matching mini versions while I was on vacation last week which is why the stream didn't start any sooner than this week thank you for letting me go on vacation <laughs> um, so I've cut out a lot of this just a, just a lot of that that's what I did all on my vacation so I'm gonna set these aside really quick and talk about the other pieces actually I have a whole ironing board right behind me there we go we'll get to these foam the foam and the craft decks I promise Okay, to clarify, you have two pieces. So these guys, really long piece, are your credit card pockets. Those are the guys that get folded up and folded up and folded up and made into these purple pieces in here. There is one purple piece on one side and there is another purple piece on the other side. This very bottom piece is my green backing, which is the same part that gets put up here um, it's the 10 by 10 and a half piece so these credit card pocket pieces get folded up they become your back little pockets and then your six credit card pieces on each side uh, they are not attached at the bottom which is what I was trying to get at uh, so they are literally tacked in not tacked they are stitched down but they're stitched down to your main piece over here uh, with everything else it's a really fun way of putting the whole thing together at the end it, I'm very very impressed I was impressed when we did the journey travel bag on how it was written and I'm impressed all over again so that's what this becomes and then you're asked to cut two little pieces like that and it's just a little bit confusing because why do you need two little pieces well I will show you so because of the size of credit cards 
versus the size of this wallet versus the, the size of the pocket back here and to be able to actually get into all of those credit card slots and still have enough like so that those credit card slots aren't shoved up right against the zipper there's this tiny little and you can almost barely see it there's that little bit of blue right there that's what these little pieces are now they become a lot more helpful and very very necessary when you're putting the triangle pieces on um, so that's why I made these the same color as this so that they would blend in a little bit better uh, obviously on my test piece you can kind of see it on both. well it's much easier to see it on this side because it doesn't blend in on this side it blends in very much with my accordion pieces you can't even tell so oh yeah by the way in case you were curious on how this happens this zipper pocket is completely detached from the bottom so that means I can pull that zipper piece all the way out to stitch it genius genius I tell you uh, so it's these tiny little tiny little pieces make life a lot easier but it's really hard to tell unless that fabric doesn't match either the try the little accordion pieces or your credit card pockets which is why I made it match my credit card pockets so it's a little more less of obvious it's not that it's a bad piece it's not it's not obviously anything that you have to hide it's just something that doesn't need to scream in my opinion okay so that's you and then we have zip pouch and zip pouch ends and as you can tell i'm a very large fan of my clips I love these clips. I will explain why these clips are very, very vital for this project uh, shortly. So here's our zip pouch. There's four pieces. So there's two exteriors and two interiors. And I was a little silly when I did mine. Again, I played with colors. I had meant to put both blues on the inside and both greens on the outside so there would be green on the outside everywhere but I had accidentally put this one backwards when I was attaching the zipper and then I just decided you know what it's a test run it'll be okay plus it makes it a little more obvious to show you where this is and where all the other pieces are because it's not as easy to see on this side and then I decided oh let's just have a little fun with color let's put the green side with the blue and the blue side with the green whatever um, and again it's literal <laughs> the color scheme on this guy did not turn out the way I had meant it but it was a test run and I'm okay with it so there's four different pieces for your zipper pouch so there's one two three four that's where they go and that's why I made them all four the same this time around but again that's I made them all four the same for this one that's the way I wanted to design this particular pattern piece and pattern setup. The zipper ends are these little guys right there. It's a little easier to see if I show you the blue side. It's this little part right there. It's literally just on the end of either side of the zipper. There's two on the inside and two on the outside. And it's basically just to make sure that the zipper ends up being the right size for everything else. And, you know, to make sure it stops before gets to the end yeah not bad at all so that is all of your fabric pieces that is all of your that is all of your fabric pieces now we'll talk about the rest of the decoville pieces really quick so you have two two and three fourths by seven and a half if I remember right that's for the pockets I had to put them inside to make sure it was the right size. So that's the set, the two pieces for your zipper pouch. And then, or maybe that's my three by sevens. Ah, that's my three by sevens. Sorry, everybody. That's my three by sevens. I know better. I should have read my directions today. And then the other piece is the main, one or the other. Directions are very clear. Is the main piece for the credit card parts. And then we do one and a half by sevens down the rest of the way so and it's one ingenious thing so a lot of patterns tell you to stitch across the top where your fold is for your credit card 
and if I like detail stitching like I did a I wish I still had it I think I sold it I did a Star Trek uh, wallet and the credit card part was white fabric I know I'm crazy but I did each color stitching in a different color of the Star Trek for those of you who aren't familiar they have some main colors to them there's green for engineering and red for command and uh, this kind of mustardy color for I'm sorry mustard color is for engineering blue is for medical and red is for command but I'll put my geek card away for a moment but they a lot of times you do stitching right across the top of your credit card slot well instead of doing that we are putting a piece of Decaville uh, at the top of it so this this has some good solidity to it especially the very top one where you have a piece of Decaville oh, that's my chalk mark you have a piece of Decaville on the inside and a shorter piece on the outside and it's just folded over and it's it's beautiful and it would work it works beautifully so that's what these little guys are for one of these two goes I can't remember which I'm very sorry one of these two goes for your credit cards. <laughs> one goes for your credit cards, one goes for your zipper pouch. It's very clear in the directions. We'll know by the time we get there. And the rest of these guys, these eight guys, go for the top of your credit card slots. Alright. Everybody ready to see craft decks and the foam? So, or craft text. If you have not uh, played with craft text yet, I recommend you do so. Now, Shop XOXO Lauren is selling hers for eight bucks a yard, which is amazing, plus shipping. But her craft text is much wider than regular craft text. So let me talk a little bit about craft text. It has the feel of sort of leather. I'm getting out my examples. That's why I'm not on screen right now. So here's a piece that I got from Amazon, I think. So this is the piece that I got from Amazon and it has not been uh, washed. Do not wash your craft text for this project. So you can wash it and it will come out looking like, you know how you can sometimes get that really smooth leather and then you can get the leather with the wrinklies all over it? If you wash this, it'll come out having the wrinklies all over it. It will also be much less stable. It'll be a lot more willing to flex. And that's not want something we want for this project. We want the stability. We want the rigidity. You can tell I've cut them out already. You can see the, the lines. So we want that rigidity. So we cut out B and C out of craft text. So C is going to be the inside. That's the square piece. That's going to be your lining. And B is going to be the piece that we did the curved piece for. I'm going to cut those babies out really quick. And so this is paper, technically. It's kind of like tag board, but tag board doesn't have the hand that this does. It doesn't have the feel that this stuff does. And this is also much stronger than tag board. It takes pen and paper just like tag board does. Probably a little bit better. Um, it's been a while since I've done a, a science fair, so. Because this is going to be completely covered by... Uh, going to be completely covered. I'm not too worried about having lines that are seen. But since my main fabric is white, I'm going to be a little careful. Um, the reason I bring this up is because Craftex comes in a plethora of colors. Um, obviously, white. Um, I have gray from Amazon, that stone color. You can always tell which 
pattern piece is which because uh, C has got those little indents on the on the inside of it I still well I would if I had them I still try and cut out I put all my scissors away I still cut out my craft X with my paper scissors if I knew where they were sure would be great if I put my studio back together Those are not my paper scissors. There they are. Well, one pair at least. Okay. So I still cut out craft X with my paper scissors as opposed to my fabric scissors because it is paper. But this stuff is great. Uh, so if anybody has questions, this is a beautiful time to chime in. I am always willing to pause and talk about any questions that you do have, by the way. So just feel free to, to step, to just type on on, uh, for reference, if you ask a question and it's something that I'm going to be talking about in like five minutes or something like that. I will say, hey, give me a minute, we're getting to that. I will always respond, assuming that I have seen your question. If I have not seen your question, feel free to ask it again. You want to keep these as smooth as physically possible. So try and keep that corner. I cut mine out a little rough. Try and keep that corner nice and smooth because that will be the basis for everything that we do, especially on the outside craft decks. because that's really going to show. Now, as you can tell, I'm doing the fabric version of this pattern. I've not had the guts to try and do the leather. I have seen some and they are stunning. I also haven't found a leather light enough to make me happy to try and do this. Oh, and there are questions and my mouse does not like me. Oh, but my mouse apparently likes the craft decks. Hi, Kylie. I can see your comment, Sue. Welcome back. Okay, Gina. So this craft decks. Hold on one sec. I want to show you because there's a, this is an important distinction. So I got a I think it's a yard and a half piece of craft decks from Amazon for 15 bucks, no shipping charge. Okay, and it is a little dirty because it was on my floor, don't tell. It is this wide. And I'm putting things on it because I'm going to go get the piece that I got from XOXO Lauren, who is amazing and fantastic, and I adore her. Everybody make sure you tell her she's amazing. Oh, and I even have the, uh, I have the uh, craft decks that I washed, so I'll show that to you too. Because I use the craft decks that I want for my company labels as I throw my entire studio around. I use the stuff that I wash for my company labels because I don't like how it looks. <laughs> so I, I just put, use that as my company labels instead. Okay, so like I said, XOXO Lauren has got them on her website. It's literally shop XOXO Lauren. Um, She's got it on her website for eight bucks a yard. Shipping's a little expensive because, well, the stuff isn't easy to ship. So for just a little bit more per yard, like maybe a dollar more, but hers is, oops, 
substantially wider. Is that 12 yards, inches? Nine and a half inches wider. So I know she has limited colors, which obviously in this particular pattern, it doesn't matter what color you're doing, but she has limited colors. I have some really pretty colors. Don't get the metallics for this project. That's a, a little bit thinner, a craft X. And the whole point of getting craft X for this project is for the rigidity and the thickness. So as you've seen, I'm having a little trouble kind of manhandling my craft X around because it's, you know, rigid like it should be. Uh, so it's misbehaving a little bit. So this is the unwashed, and of course it's white. This is the washed, and of course, well, it's white. But it's a lot easier to move around. Like, see, let's see if we can not wash out the horrible. Let's see if I turn off. It's gonna get a little dark, guys. Don't be scared. See if we can turn off my main. See, that shows it a little bit better. So I have a main uh, camera right above, or right above this camera, as you can tell from the wonderful shadows on my hand. So this Craft X right here has been washed. So you can kind of see the wrinkles in it, especially right there. And I had to like put heavy things on it and make sure that it stayed, um, that it got a little bit flatter. So that's what the washed Craft X looks like. This is the unwashed stuff. Nice, smooth, flat, pretty. So now that you know what my studio looks like when my studio lights aren't on, we'll put those back on because it's a lot easier to see the project. Okay, so shop XOXO Lauren. And now that we're done with that, we can get on to the rest of this. So yes, I would, and I ordered a lot from her. So Beth, uh, yes, I think the cotton is a lot easier than trying to work with this pattern the first time around with a vinyl or a leather. And let me tell you why. Now keep in mind, this is my opinion. If you are amazing with vinyl and leather, go for it. Rock this pattern. Um, I would, I'm really excited to see what you guys do. Um, I'm done this pattern once and I plan on doing it 25 more times at least and all of those times are in cotton because if I make a mistake it's not gonna be as obvious cotton is very forgiving that way leather vinyl not so much as I'm sure you're all aware so it's not something that I plan on doing anytime soon and I don't recommend cork at all um, in one of Sue's videos in this pattern which she has some beautiful videos I'm very jealous of her prep prep area her broadcast area very very jealous um, she talks about why she doesn't recommend cork and I absolutely see her point of view um, it's because the corners Where's my sample? Here's my sample. Okay, so if you do cork for your exterior, you have to kind of think, what is this going to be used for and how? And that's one of the concerns I have with doing uh, cork on things like bottoms. Like bottoms, sure. If it's like a nice clear curve, like I did. Where's that bag? Okay, here's a great example. Here's the most recent bag that I finished. Okay, if I wanted to do a cork bottom for this bag, I would have no problem with that. Reason being, there's no serious point corner. Like, yeah, there's sort of kind of corners right here where this is one piece over here and this is a second piece it's not all one piece all the way through but if I was being particularly ingenuitive I could make this whole thing one piece 
and not worry about this corner or any other corner rubbing the cork off. Because cork, if you're not familiar, is basically a thin piece of um, wood adhered to basically what's on the back of a piece of vinyl. So the concern is that right along this edge, the cork part would rub off. Now, and maybe on this corner at the bottom where it's folded over. Now, I absolutely see that point of view. Like that is a valid concern. Now, if you have a piece of cork that you absolutely love and you desperately want to do it with this project, what I would recommend is first off, <laughs> first off, do this project once with a, with a cotton and do your cork piece that you love as a second time around. Because there are a few very sticky wickets, for lack of a better phrase. And for those of you who are curious how I store my uh, craft decks, you're going to love this. That way it encourages everything to stop curling. And then I just hang it up in my closet. But I have closet space. Some people have flat space. There we go. Okay, so I would maybe, if you have a piece of cork that you absolutely love, I would maybe do it as an inlay piece and do the exterior in fabric. So if I was gonna do it, and you know, you could definitely do this with leather and things along that line too. So this is my, ex my exterior. So this will end up going like that eventually. What I might do is cut a piece, maybe a little smaller than the foam pattern piece of that cork, of that inlay, and stitch it over your regular fabric before you even begin the project. That way, when you start all of that stitching, all of that stuff, if you make a mistake, it's on the cotton and you're not really going to have that, oh my goodness, I just ruined a piece of, you know, $45 a yard cork or leather that you can't possibly get another piece to match if you, if you were being that careful. Um, there is... I know Sue has very specific directions on what ounceage of leather to use. And I know several people were having trouble finding some leather that is that thin. Um, and then even then you still have to skip it. And I've never skipped leather. I think that our, our illustrious leader, Barb, is doing one of these in leather, but I could be wrong. I think that's what she was giving, but I'm not quite sure. So if she happens to be on and feels like sharing with us, that would be great. Um, uh, so we will be going over the fabric directions. Um, I will be talking a lot about the fabric directions because the fabric directions are the ones I know. Um, but that doesn't mean that I won't talk about the leather ones. I will definitely... Um, relay to you the advice that I have heard and I have seen. But I can't directly speak to from personal experience about the leather, doing this pattern in leather, just so you know. So yes, there's my craft decks. So that is piece C and oops, C and P. Had them backwards. I'm like, and you can tell because there's a little notch out of this one. I had it backwards already. Doing great today. Just doing great. Ooh. Thank you, Sue. I hadn't considered lamb being a good piece of leather. Small and expensive, thin. Nice. Thank you, Sue. That's a great item. See, and now you're made, made me less terrified about doing leather. And uh, Gina, you're absolutely welcome. Um, I had, 
I don't know who, where I had gotten the idea for craft decks. I had gotten it before this project because I had a piece sitting here. I'd already bought it. I'd already, well, I'd washed it like a doorknob. But the only reason I say I washed it like a doorknob is because it can't be used for this project. <laughs> so that piece of craft axe can't be used for this project. I will find another project to use it for. But at least now you've seen what it looks like and why I buy what I do and where I do. We will come back to these. We will draw lines all over them in just a little bit. Now I wanted to talk to you about paste D. So this is where we start talking about foam. So in the video that Sue was amazingly kind enough to put up, she talks about foam and why you want to use one specific foam and not this foam and why that foam and not that foam. And she doesn't specifically say, but I have my own personal theories and I'm cleaning off my table because the roll of foam that I have is insanely huge. So she doesn't specifically say why she told everyone to get a non-porous foam. But I have a theory. And I'm pretty sure I'm right, but, you know, it wouldn't be the first time that I was wrong before in my life either. Sorry, I have to get to the big thing of foam. So, the non-porous foam that we're supposed to use. So let's talk about foam. So before I watched the video, I went, oh, foam is foam is foam is foam. It doesn't matter what kind I do or what kind I get. I'll just cut out two pieces. Oh, I have this headliner sitting over here. I'll just cut out this headliner and it, it'll be great. Everything will be fine. No big deal. And then I was like, oh, well, if that doesn't work, I have these wonderful pieces of, uh, I know this is double adhesive, but I have no idea what it's, what it's called anymore because <laughs> I don't have the little pieces of plastic or pieces of, Of, of directions with it. Oh, well, if that doesn't work, I have this other foam sitting around. It's no big deal. I've got, I've got foam. I don't need to go out and get any foam. And then I started watching other videos because I wanted to be prepared for you guys. Yeah. So let's think about the construction of this wallet. for just a minute. We have a beautiful piece of fabric, whether that be vinyl, leather, whatever, cotton, like I used. Porous cotton. Vinyl and leather, not so much, but still. We have a zipper, okay? And we have the craft text right under the cotton. So porous cotton, then that piece of foam, whatever it happens to be, and a piece of, for lack of a better phrase, cardboard. So what happens when you're trying to pay for, like, a hot dog at a hot dog stand out in the middle of the street and it's raining? Now you have a dot of water. Now I'm sure all of us waterproof our items that we actually plan on leaving our houses as opposed to just samples like this one. But let's say someone just decided to buy this one right now. Because it is very pretty, despite its idiosyncrasies. So now a dot of water hits it. So that bleeds into the fabric. Now let's say I'd use this headliner. Headliner has in case you aren't familiar with it. It's very inexpensive. You can get it at Joann's. It's what I usually put in my, my bags for foam, uh, unless I need the double adhesive. But I usually use this stuff because it's inexpensive and it doesn't deteriorate. It isn't, it doesn't have as much body as the, you know, official Pellon foam. But if you want a softer bag, I use the headliner. Well, it's got a, it's, it's the stuff that goes on the roof of your car. So it's got a fabric-y side, and it's got a very plasticky side. So let's say you put the fabric-y side towards your fabric, and that's the way you put it together. And you put the plasticky side towards the paper, craft X. So 
So when we lay all this out, by the way, it looks like this, and then your fabric goes on top of it, in case you are curious about how, the, how this goes. So let's say a water, drop of water hits it, it goes through the cotton, it goes into this. Well, this, this one side is sort of kind of plasticky, but it's, it's got a good feel to it. I'm sure it's, it's going to absorb the water, okay? So the water gets absorbed there. Well, this is a really open, loose foam. So I can see it very easily going through, going through the holes in the foam and getting into the craft decks. Well, now it's weakening the craft deck. Now, if you remember seeing the craft decks that I showed you that I had washed, now the stabilizer isn't as stable. So, that's why I believe that Sue gives a very specific uh, direction on which foam to get. And that's why I will not be using this foam for this project. I will find another piece where this is needed. I will do something else with this piece of, of foam. And I'll actually, ironically, cut out two before I run the directions. I have two pieces of that foam. But I will find another use for it. And that's okay. I have tons of
How about now? Hey, I got bars. Yeah. I got bars. It's much better. No comment. That's going to be everybody saying no, they can't hear me. For a short while, there was no static and no volume. Now we have static again. Okay. So that short while, while they had no static and no volume, was when I muted myself. And your stream's not working again. Yeah, my stream is doing some weird. We'll find out. I've been trying to find out. Come on. Do this little mousey thingy. Woo! Yay! Thanks, everybody. We think the battery was dying in my mobile handset. The fun thing is I'll be getting a new one soon, so the audio problems should at least calm down. Okay. Thank you, most wonderful of husbands. We all love you. Okay, so... I think I was talking about foam. Thank you, sweetie. So, the foam that she recommends is an eighth of an inch thick. And as I was saying at the very beginning of this video, the foam that I have is like a millimeter shorter than that. But when you're talking about something so small to begin with, a millimeter is kind of obvious. And let me know if anybody thinks I missed something and I'll go back and talk some more. I can do less of talking. Yes, I am back, I'm so excited. You guys have me really worried. You're like, what is that sound? I'm like, ah, oh, fudgesicles and lollipops, what did I do? I broke it. All right, so foam. So this stuff you get at hardware stores. I went to Home Depot and I found it for like 25 bucks. And then I went to Floor and Decor, which is a local-ish, like regional flooring department. And I got this for 20 bucks inside. And I have cut out, I've cut out a lot of this roll and there's still like at least half of it left. I've already cut out all 12 regular size and 12 uh, minis out of this, plus my test one. And then now I'm gonna cut out my regular one. See, Lauren, why do you have to like show up right after I've already plugged your craft X? By the way, you might have a whole bunch of people ordering craft X, just fair warning. Because I told them and I showed them that ordering from your craft X is actually cheaper than ordering from Amazon. So go you, you're awesome. So I have a four foot long roll of, cra of foam that I bought just for this project and I do not regret it in the least. Um, it takes a marker really well, or a, uh, a ballpoint pen. I use a ballpoint pen to mark it out. Lauren Hutton, Lauren Hutton Whitney is the one with the craft X, by the way. And it is really that easy. Now, one of the things I want to try in one of these, maybe I'll try it in this one, is I want to try doing, so like I was saying, this foam is a millimeter too thin. So I won't have that, the, the feel of the padding on the outside of that wallet, I won't have that feel. Like this wallet feels nice, but it doesn't feel luxurious, like having that extra cush and it does to me. So I kept thinking about it, doing two pieces of foam. So maybe I will do two pieces of foam and just see how it goes. Now everyone has to give me a little bit of wiggle room because now I'm making everything just a little bit thicker, which is going to make everything just a little bit harder. So everyone has to give me a little slack when I like stitch everything wrong for the third time. You can laugh just, you know, not via text. <laughs> Now, nah, if you want to laugh for your text, I'll take it. I actually don't mind. All right. So we'll do two pieces of this craft, or this foam, and we'll see how it comes out. Should be fun. And again, this is not something that I use my fabric scissors on at all. Nope, nope, nope. Nope, nope, nope. I'm trying to make sure that my... Is there a brand name for the foam I'm using? So, no, there's not. But if you walk into 
any home flooring or any home improvement store and you go over to where they sell hardwood floors, you will see rolls of this stuff. Um, I got generic, like literally the only kind I could buy at Home Depot was their brand. This stuff is not, there's not a lot of competition for this foam. And I love it. If it was thicker, I'd use it in regular bags, but it's very, very thin, which is perfect for this project. And in case you're curious, it's got this big, long plastic kind of plastic side. It like goes all the way out to here. That's so that when you're laying it down on the floors for the hardwood, there's this extra white part right here. That's actually when you take it off, it's a piece, it's a piece of tape. So this would get taped on to this plasticky side. So they get butted up against each other and taped on together. Just, you know, for those of you who are curious. So yes, I have a huge roll of tape, or I have a huge, I keep calling it tape or craft axe. I have a huge roll of foam sitting in the corner of my studio. Good thing I have really high ceilings. Well, I have normal ceilings, but good, ha good thing I have a table in the corner. So no, there's not a name brand for it, but I promise you if you just walk into a home improvement store and say you want the foam that goes under hardwood floors, they'll bring you to it. And I have no idea where Sue got the eighth of an inch one because that's, like I said, just a little bit thicker than the stuff I have, but hey, that's okay. That's part of the exploring a pattern part, right? Let me try something. You see what works for you. That's the fun part. Dish foam at Walmart. Now there's an interesting idea. Uh, Lori, do you know how thick that dish foam is by chance? Just out of curiosity. Don't try and rip it, it doesn't work. <laughs> I just tried. I'm just removing this excess uh, plasticky piece. Almost done, guys. Okay. Nope. I still got a corner. Boo. And again, you don't have to be as specific with cutting out the foam, but the craft decks. Definitely be as specific as you can. Okay. So I'm going to, as soon as I finish cutting the corners off of this one, I'm going to treat these two pieces of foam as if they were one. Now, I don't want to stitch through them. Like I could quilt them, I suppose, but I don't want to stitch through them. I want to pretend that they're one piece of foam. So I'm probably gonna do a spray adhesive. Now there's a bit, so. For those of you who were with me during the uh, journey travel bag, there was a lot of double-sided tape in that, in that, bag, in that uh, pattern. And we struggled with it a little bit when we got through it. And a lot of times where she said double-sided tape, I did a iron-on double-sided tape so that I wouldn't have as much sticky, which worked well in some places and not so much in others. So I would definitely take notes on where I did that. Um, in this pattern, you use a lot of glue, but you use it sparingly. It's really strange. So you'll use glue in <laughs> different times but you'll spread it thin is what I'm saying. So you'll use it a lot in different places, but you'll use a, a, a coating of glue, not a coating, like not globs of glue, but a coating of glue. And it works out really well. So, and there's a couple of times we use spray adhesive into it as well. And if my mouse would work, I'd be able to see what other people have been saying. 
And you guys are just having a blast today, aren't you? Packaging supplier. Oh, so you're talking about like the stuff that you put between the dishes when you're um, when you're uh, moving. So that's going to be over by um, school supplies, and like the it'll be over by the school supplies and the party supplies, mostly like wrapping paper and stuff. Interesting, Lori. Thanks so much for the uh, advice there. Okay, now I think we might actually move on to reading the pattern. Everybody excited? I'm excited. Okay, so now we have to just start, we need to make some marks. So if you were here for the journey travel bag, I kind of skipped the making marks thing ahead of time and did them later. That is not something that I am going to do with this pattern because I tried and it didn't turn out so well when I made my um, original one. So. We're going to actually make all our marks. Um, so I have all of my pieces cut. I have an exterior. Let me make sure I have all my pieces cut before I start moving on. Okay. Piece with piece, piece with piece, piece with piece. I have an exterior, which is my A. I have B craft axe, which is the one that doesn't have the notches in it. I have the craft axe that does have the notches in it. So the non-notched is the exterior, the notched is the interior. And Lori, you are awesome, you rock. I have my foam. I have my four accordion pieces that'll go on the sides. I have my two stabilizers for the accordion pieces. That's those guys. My back lining panel, panel is this darker color behind the original piece. My credit card pockets. Doo -doo 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 -doo. My credit card pockets and my credit card side panels. That's these guys. My zipper pouch and pouch ends, which is the very bottom one, are those. I have two three by sevens, uh, the eight skinny pieces, and the two bigger pieces of Decoville for both the credit card slots and the zip pouch right there. All right, that's the whole spreadsheet. So <laughs> she did this in her other pattern. Literally, the, the first like half a dozen words are prep work, do not skip these steps. And I skipped them. I'm such a bad person. I totally skipped them last time and I skipped them when I did this pattern for my test pattern and I had to go back and do them and I felt like the biggest doorknob in the world so when I did this one I skipped the prep and I will not I will not do that again when I do a Maggie 55 pattern again ever 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 I girl scout promise because <laughs> it made my life a lot harder all right everybody now that we've been here an hour and a half, we're actually going to get to work. So I'm going to use a pencil to mark all my marks. Now, well, I'm going to use a pencil when I mark on my craft axe. And I'm not going to use anything darker than that. Reason being, first off, craft axe is paper, so it's going to take the pencil very, very happily. Where did I put my soda down? There she is. I got a new rolling uh, stool that rolls between my prep table and my sewing machine, and it's awesome. As you can tell, I'm very excited about it. Okay, we will need my, my trusty ruler. So there's some marks that we have to make. And the reason they're important is that these will come into play as we go down the line, where we wanna make sure that we matched item places up, 
we want to make sure that we started and stopped stitching at different places. One thing that I like but don't like about this pattern and it's something that I'm going to try that's just a little bit different. Now I will talk about this every single time that I deviate from Sue's pattern just so you guys can decide how you want to do yours is that we have this false stitch line. Now it actually is a false stitch. So there's two loose stitch lines on the outside of this guy. There's the one that goes all the way around, including right here. And then there's one that starts here, goes all the way around and stops there. So there's two different stitch lines. The one that starts here and goes all the way around and only stays on this side of the fabric is a false stitch line. It looks really, really cool, and it looks like you did like double stitching, but that one's a pretend stitch line. And I'm not sure, and maybe Sue can chime in here if she's still around, uh, why this false stitch line doesn't go all the way over. Like, I don't understand why it doesn't go there. Now, I don't know if that was a design choice or something wrong along those lines. I kind of want to do that false stitch line all the way around because my OCD is, it's going crazy. I did it the way that her directions said the first time for my test because I always follow the directions unless I know that something isn't going to work as well as a different I idea that I have. I almost always follow directions uh, letter to the letter, so I did. But this drives me crazy. I, it absolutely drives me crazy. Why can't I stitch all the way around? I don't get it. Uh, so I might, 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 might stitch all the way around on the new one, but I'm still going to make all the marks. So wh where the false stitch line starts and stops and everything like that. I'm still going to make all the marks just in case there's a good reason, excuse me, or I decide not to do what I was going to do. So we're still going to make all the marks just to be absolutely sure. Sure. And I need a few more things. There we go. This is also a water soluble, or, I'm sorry, this is a water soluble pen that I got on an Amazon because we are Prime members. So I don't have to pay shipping ever and it's awesome, assuming I buy the right products. All right, so I don't need to be painfully careful, but I do need to be kind of careful when I make all these marks, partially because I have a very light colored main fabric and I don't want any of these marks that I plan on making to show through this. Now the nice thing is if I mark on the wrong side, so, and that's where it will be. So let's say I mark all over this craft text that will go on the back of this. Well, I'm not going to mark anything on the, on the side that's going to be against the fabric. No, no. So this is going to go like this and here that way. So there aren't going to be any marks on here, but I don't want anything to show through anywhere. So I'm going to be a little careful. I'm OCD like that. So let's see. On the wrong side of the exterior piece, mark centers on all four sides. See, this is actually on the fabric itself. See, I was prepping on for getting everything ready to mark on the craft X and no, no, that's not where we're marking first. All right, so basically north, south, east, west. So to do that, I'm gonna lay out my pattern piece. Now this comes off with water and I'm not too worried about it because where I'm gonna mark is gonna be in the seam allowance. So it's not really ever gonna show anyway. So there's one and all I do is I slide it up, down, left or right, just a little bit. recenter, move it over. This is why it's so important to make sure the, the marks on your pattern are transferred carefully. And the nice thing is I can literally lay my pattern piece under this piece and remark everything. So it's kind of cheating. It's kind of not. 
All right. North, south, east, west. Oh, on the wrong side. I marked on the right side. Oh, well. We'll just do that all over again. No harm, no foul. And like I said, it'll come off with water. Yes, I tested it before I did this. No big deal. There we go. Nice and easy. And this is part of the reason that I want to be careful about what I use to mark because I'm not sure if it's going to bleed through or not. Okay. So we're going to take piece B, which is actually the piece for your craft axe, and we're going to put it in here. And we're going to mark up centers. So match up centers. So I'm having a little trouble doing that. So one of the things that is suggested is that you basically do a crosshairs. And because my fabric is light, I'm just going to do that with a pencil instead of the colored marker. so that nothing shows on the other side. Well, never find that again, huh? And now it's much easier to find the center of everything. And this is actually really important. Now I'm gonna draw this really light, but I'm still gonna draw it with my marker because I know that getting this craft text properly positioned is really important. Especially if you have, like I've done this with, I did, I interfaced a piece of spandex because the pattern in the spandex was really, really cool. So I interfaced a piece of spandex and then I did, did this with it and it looks great, but it's really thick. So it's going to be one of those things that's going to be a little difficult. Make sure I don't see anything through. Looks good. Okay. So if you are using leather, make sure you skiv around the wrong side up to five eighths of an inch and draw your marking lines afterwards. So I have my crosshairs that are really, really light because I have a light fabric. And then I marked around, I took the B pattern piece and I marked around just to make sure I have the right curve of everything. So now we're going to actually get the stabilizers. That goes up there. Here we are. Now these, keep everybody together. You go over there. So these, it doesn't really matter. Now if I had a light colored lining, I'd want to be careful what I marked on this and this because I don't want the light color lining to have these marks but because my li my lining is a navy with little white dots on it i'm not worried at all so i could use a big fat black marker if i wanted to now i'm not going to because that's just inviting <laughs> that's just inviting trouble but i do want to make all my marks on this guy so take your stabilizer piece and just start marking all your lines Just like we did before. Now this time I actually I'm gonna mark these uh, these are the full stitch lines. I'm still gonna mark everything just in case I decide that I don't want to do it that way. Like I do want to keep those full stitch lines. I still want to put those on. Now I actually want to personally add another set of lines to this part. Where are you? There you are. So <clears throat> my false stitches start right. And you can't see. Can you see this? Yes. My false stitches start right there. 
So as you can see, that's just, it's like a pinky width maybe, yeah, in from the corner of this wallet. And that happens over here too. So another set of lines that I found very useful on this would be the lines where this fold occurs. And that's gonna be important because you're going to assemble the exterior independent of the interior. So we're gonna as assemble the exterior and we're gonna set it aside. So this part. And we'll, we'll get the zipper attached to it and then we're gonna set it aside. Then we're going to assemble everything in here. So we'll put the card slots together, we'll put this zipper pocket together, we'll put the accordion pieces sort of kind of on, and then we'll put it, then we'll put it in here. Then we'll attach it to the exterior. So having where everything is folding to make sure that this wallet looks good before we start putting everything else together would be really, really helpful for me. So I can tell you that at its widest, it's an inch. And it's more, it's, it's really close to an inch the whole way. Now your false stitch line is an inch and a half. So I'm gonna add another set of lines that are an inch on either side of this center. Maybe, I wish I had another colored pencil. As I look up to see if I have a colored pencil. I'm not going to get that wet. I'm not going to take that off. Oh, this is going to be the inside. No one's going to see it. Yay. So yeah, I am totally going to add another set of lines to this setup just because it's going to be more helpful for me. Now, it may not be useful for you, but maybe that's not how you, your stuff works. That's okay. But I found, because Sue in her videos shows that she uses uh, basically a block of wood to fold it up around. Well, I don't have a conveniently one inch wide block of wood, though that would be kind of cool. And when I start making so many of these, I might have a convenient block of wood to fold around. But until that day, I'm just gonna put these extra lines in there, there. Just a couple of so mine's gonna look a little different than yours, everybody. And don't freak out on me. Just remember, my blue lines don't exist. There is no blue line. There are only four lights. Okay, so I'll move my big fat head. Okay, good. You can kind of see. I always worry that I'm like putting my head over my project. You can't see anything that I'm doing. But I've learned to like move my head off to the side or something. Okay, so I have my center line and my stitch lines, and I might as well label them. So I have my center line, my two stitch lines, and my two fold lines. My two fold lines are just for me. Uh, they are not part of the pattern, so you won't see them in any of the pattern pieces. But they are for me so that I can understand what's going on. So that's there, and then I'm going to mark the center going the opposite direction. And this is going to be very useful when I try and center everything else. All right, now... So that's all centered and that looks beautiful. All right, so that's all the prep for those two pieces. Oh no, now we're ready to start doing stuff. <gasps> we're gonna do 
do stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go a little bit further. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna put marks on my foam and I'm gonna show you why later. Because I had a hard time a couple of times making sure that all of my, uh, that everything ma matched up. Now, obviously, I fixed that problem since then. But I fixed it by making sure that all my lines had little marks on them. Now, once I do my 450th one of these guys, I'm pretty sure it won't be that big a deal. But I like having the marks on the foam. Okay, so this is where things get a little interesting. We're going to start assembling. Now we are on page eight and we're going to start exterior construction, but only by a little bit. We'll probably only go till eight o'clock tonight because there's not a lot of stitching going on. And, and if somebody skipped, like somebody skipped this one because I thought we were just cutting out stuff and talking about stuff, um, we might have lost a few people if I go too far. Okay, so we're gonna start with exterior construction. I'm gonna get everything out of the way and we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Cause the way I do things is a little bit different in case you haven't noticed. I try not to stray too far from the path. So you're gonna want some spray adhesive. So while you're at that uh, hardware store getting your, getting your exterior foam, you might wanna look at their spray adhesives. Hi, Sally. I draw outlines. <laughs> See, Barbara, you and I would be kindred spirits because I tend to draw on things all over the place as long as, you know, there isn't going to be a repercussion thereof. <laughs> I draw all over stuff too. So while you're at that hardware store, oh no, where's my box? I, I brought a box of stuff Ah, there's my box. With me on vacation, quote unquote, there was a whole bunch of sewing stuff. Of course, because what else do you do on vacation? And I'm trying to figure out where I put my spray adhesive. So, as I'm sure some of you know, there's a spray adhesive that's for fabric and they sell it at the fabric stores and it's insanely expensive because they sell it at the fabric stores. Um, and now I'm wondering where I put it. I buy my spray adhesive at the hardware store because they don't realize what they have. It is, and some of you may have seen it at the retreat. So here, this is what you get. This was at Hobby Lobby for $14. This is spray and bond fusible adhesive. I had a 50% off coupon. I figured might as well, won't hurt any. Ah, uh, and I have an awesome can of spray adhesive and I don't have no idea where I left it. I know I didn't leave it, I know I didn't leave it at the Airbnb. That I know I didn't do. Anyway, the can is twice that size for half that price. And it's infuriating. Ooh, ooh, no, it's not in my box. It's not in there. Every once in a while I wonder if somebody goes back and looks at these videos not knowing anything about us, uh, they just find it on my, they find it on, on my YouTube channel someday and they don't know me. So they're watching this crazy woman trying to find things in her studio and mumbling about it the entire time. Sometimes I worry they're going to think I'm crazy, but you know, meh, I'll get over it. Anyway, I'm not going to find it and that's okay, but it's like 3M, so 3M makes it and it's a spray adhesive. Like I said, it's, it's like twice the ounceage for half the price. So while you're at the hardware store getting the non-porous foam, go into the spray paint aisle 
and in that spray thin aisle there will be spray adhesive and like I said mine's from 3M and I adore it I use it all the time it doesn't have like you can hear the that guy yeah it doesn't have the little uh, ball but it doesn't need one it's spray adhesive it's not spray paint uh, and it works great I, I have used it almost exclusively so that's where I would go now my cat's awake and looking at me mom why are you making noise yep not gonna find it okay moving on so you will need spray adhesive for these parts and Sue's videos are awesome so she like Lily has all this beautiful white newsprint and she like does her spray adhesive and she's like you need to move your change your newsprint and put it down because you're going to need to do something else on it on the same table and I'm like oh you're awesome <coughs> and the reason I giggle is because I ain't got time for 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 having one piece of newsprint for uh my spray adhesive no 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 I have a tub so as you can see this is well loved this is where all of my spray adhesive happens <coughs> uh, I don't use this tub for anything else other than spray adhesive and it's been yeah well loved it's it's, it's got texture it's got texture that's what we'll call it so I put my piece down I spray it I take my piece out I lay it down and I do all my work but this is where my spray adhesive happens and that's why I said you guys are gonna laugh because that's the best way to keep a spray adhesive contained especially if you don't have a lot of space <coughs> excuse me while I was at the Airbnb obviously I didn't bring my huge tote with nothing else in it um, because nothing else goes in this tote nothing it literally uh, either, either sits under my sewing machine or on top of one of the highest shelves that shouldn't have anything heavy on it. <coughs> and nothing else goes in it. So, I lost my train of thought. Um, that's where all my spray adhesive happens. Oh, at the Airbnb. I didn't take my big tote. I ended up going to the dollar store and getting like a turkey baster pan. It had good enough high size. I did all my spray adhesive in that. Worked well. Only had a little over spray to clean up. It was great. Okay, so spray adhesive needed. So vinyl and fabric need spray adhesive. Leather, she, uh, she recommends Tandy's Echo Weld. Now I will admit leather is a weak area of my experience. I don't have a lot of experience working with leather except in the patching and mending. So I used to work in an alteration shops and I have been sewing for 30 some years. Um, but I managed multiple uh, alteration shops at the same time. I'm talking four. So all the hard projects became mine so I did a lot of leather repair and rubber cement is your best friend because that is your that's glue for leather rubber cement is the thing that does it I'm so sorry I had a coughing fit there so yes leather rubber cement best friend okay so like I said this is a fabric demo so I'm gonna use my spray adhesive with the ball in it that I overpaid for painfully overpaid so one way or the other, make sure you're not going to spray the high heaven out of your, your sewing area. The last thing you want to do is spray everywhere. Uh, da -da -da -da. So, 
So we are going to get piece B. And I'm going to put it this way so I can still read my directions. So you're going to grab your craft X. And so this is the side with my lines on it. Not that you can tell because I have the beautiful lights you've already seen. This is the side with my lines on it. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to adhere my lines to my fabric. Ah, you can see my lines. There you go. So I don't want to adhere the side with my lines to it. So, so this is now my right side. So right side down. This piece of craft X, craft tex, K R A F T T E X, like Tyrannosaurus tex, is going to adhere to this side. Well, this side of my main fabric. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. Very enthusiastic over here. Reach in and get you out of there. So I'm using two fingers. Two fingers. Now, make sure I have right sides up. Make sure you're putting the long way with the long way. So we both know that these go this way. They don't go this way or any other way. Do, 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 do. Sorry. I got, I got a song in my head now. Wow, that's not adhesive-y at all. That stuff's horrible. Spray, place, iron. My iron isn't even on. Well, that's no fun. Okay, so we'll do this later. <laughs> I finally read the directions to the spray adhesive for the stuff that I've never used before. Good prep work, right? To spray, place, then iron. I'm like, iron? What in the world are you talking about? So apparently, I don't need to worry as much. So this is going to go. See the other adhesive? You spray it and you put it. And it is there. And it will stay there. There's no ironing. It's just adhesive. Oh, thanks, Sue. Yeah, it makes my life a lot easier. The whole, the whole bucket. Like everything gets sprayed in that bucket. So I'm going to iron this later. We'll pretend it's ironed, but I matched up my directionals, made sure that all the lines matched up and then put it down. It's kind of sort of thinking about holding still. I'll iron it to make sure it's old still. Also, this is the piece of fabric where we drew around the outside and I said I really wanted to draw that line, but I drew it really light and careful. That's because I knew this craft X piece would go onto it and we'll end up folding this piece over and this edge will become this edge just in case you were wondering where everything went. Barb, I said you might be doing um, doing this project with leather. You need to tell us if you are, because there's some people that are excited about that idea. <clears throat> oh no, I didn't put the foam in it. Oh no, good thing I didn't iron it down. See, now this is where we're gonna have a problem if you use this stuff where it requires an iron, because I discovered that if you do that, this foam will melt. So don't do that. Don't expect to use a spray adhesive that wants you to iron something because it will melt. This foam, the underlying foam will melt. And in all honesty, I know the headliner melts. I don't know if the Pellon melts, but it probably melts too. So if you're going to do a spray adhesive, make sure it isn't this, <laughs> don't use this. Don't use the spray and bond fusible adhesive that is iron on. Don't use this. This is why I buy my adhesive at a hardware store. So we're going to pretend. What's going to happen is this is going to go on there. And then we're going to spray the living daylights out of it. And this is going to go on there and we're going to squish everything together and we're going to try and make sure. Yeah, this is way too thick. I can't do two layers of this. That's not going to work. So I just made a decision. So 
if you were here while we were talking about the foam, I was talking about how the foam that I have is about a millimeter thinner than an eighth of an inch, which is the eighth of an inch is what Sue suggests. Um, so the reason I'm not using, I wanted to use two pieces of foam because I wanted to get that thick kind of luxurious feel. So I cut out two pieces and I was like, I'll just you know, spray adhesive them together and everything will be fine. Because it's literally this piece of fabric and then the foam and then the craft tack. So here's my exterior piece right here. Here's two pieces of foam and here's my craft tack. So the reason that I know there's a problem is I have a line just outside. It's maybe, maybe a quarter of an inch uh, of space around the foam that the craft tax needs to adhere to the fabric. So I put my two layers of foam, which is now way too thick, on top of my fabric. And then I tried to see if I could get my craft tax to adhere to my fabric if there was enough space. And it's too thick now. So I'm going to go back to using only one piece of foam and that'll be okay. That'll be perfectly fine. No big deal. I'll just go back to using one piece of foam. Okay. So I'm going to go to the hardware store <laughs> while we were planning on going out tonight. Anyway, get all those 4th of July sales. Um, I'm going to go to the hardware store. I'm going to get the right spray adhesive and we'll pick this up right here. Uh, next Wednesday. So a week from today. The reason that I have to stop here is I cannot move forward with this project without the spray adhesive. That is exceptionally important. Reason being that is what holds everything together and stops all of these layers from moving around on each other. And I can't stitch it down because then the stitching will show. And then if I start stitching up here, everything is gonna start sliding because there's an interior piece that won't even get stitched and there's a whole bunch of good reasons. So, I won't spray adhesive anything and we will literally pick this up on page eight a week from today. All right, everybody. Let's see, B just came back. Could I use Decoville heavy instead of craft text? Okay. So I know Sue and Barb and I all had that conversation and I've actually cut out some of my two dozen, um, <coughs> my two dozen bags with Decoville Heavy instead of the Craft Tex. And I'm going to tell you both sides of this thought. So first off, Decoville Heavy is not as thick as this Craft Tex. My Craft Tex has got a lot more rigidity than the Decoville Heavy does. That being said, Craft Tex is harder to get a hold of because Decoville Heavy, obviously we all more than likely have some at our house. Um, craft test is a little bit harder to get a hold of. Now, like I said, uh, before Lauren of XOXO Lauren does have some in her inventory and she can get that out pretty quick. She, I think I ordered it yesterday and I got the notification that everything's shipping today. So, you know, keep in mind, she does have four kids. I have no idea how she handles four kids, says the woman who doesn't have any. So. Don't mind that, but um, back to the actual topic question. I like the rigidity that craft text gives me. Uh, I like how it feels when it's put together. Plus, if you're using the foam, you can't use the adhesive capability of craft text. <coughs> Excuse me. You can't use the adhesive ability of the uh, Decoville Heavy on anything at all. So now you have an adhesive side that you can't use for fear of melting the the foam, and you can't, <clears throat> and you have to glue stuff onto the other side. So now you have to glue onto something that has iron-on glue on it, which doesn't stick very well. So yes, you can, but I don't think you're going to get as quality a product because you're using Decoville Heavy for something that isn't necessarily originally written. Now, does that mean you can't? Absolutely not. You can totally do that. Um, and you'll probably get 
just as good a product out of it. You won't get the same product out of it. But hey, it won't hurt any bee. Go ahead and try it. Show us and tell us how it turns out. We'll take a look and we'll see how it goes, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so yes, because I don't have the spray adhesive. I'm sorry, Lee Jan. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna kill me. Um, I don't have the spray adhesive. We're gonna have to pick this up a week from today. We were really close to being done anyway. I was just gonna do the spray adhesive and call it a night. Uh, I will see everybody a week from today. Have a great evening, and I'll see you guys again soon.